Peace everyone, I'm Maskart here and welcome back to the colored pencil tutorial. Today we are finishing the ice cream cone project. So um, last week we finished up the, um, the colors and the texture on the cone and now all that is left is the melting ice cream. Um, it's not actually a really difficult subject. I would say where people are probably going to have the most problem with this particular subject is getting a smooth finish. And really what uh, the only thing that's required to get that smooth finish is plenty of layers and a disciplined uh, pencil pressure. That way you don't put any lines throughout. So you, you want to avoid that, uh, that pencil-like texture. Uh, that it usually leaves behind and to do that you just need plenty of layers and very disciplined pencil pressure. Uh, right now I'm just using my kneaded eraser to lift off a little bit of the graphite because it's just a tiny bit too dark for some of the areas here. So I'm just kind of dabbing it a little bit with my eraser to pull off some of the excess graphite since I don't really need those lines there anymore. Um, hello, Peter, um, Carol, Lena, uh, Carrie, Barbara, Sneaks, Sherry, um, and I, I, I left your name last because I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like Dipska, Dip, Dipska, maybe, something like that. Um, anyways, uh, oh, hello, Tessa, as well. Anyways, so I, uh, I'm going to be recycling colors. Now, one of the subjects that I've covered throughout this project is, the, uh, is color harmony. We used all of the colors that we used in the hand starting off this project. I ended up using also in the ice cream cone. And then I added like one additional color of orange in the ice cream cone to differentiate it from the hand. And pretty much the same thing's gonna happen with the ice cream itself. All of the colors are very similar. Uh, remember, in the very first stages of this project, we applied white over all of the highlighted stuff. And we did apply some of the white to the ice cream itself. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I'm gonna be recycling the same exact colors that we used throughout the project already with the addition of one color. And that is going to be this this 1080 color. This is beige sienna. So that's one new color that we'll see in the ice cream uh, today. And I think, yeah, the sienna brown, we use that in the cone and in the hand. So that's not a new color. And then I have white here also. So those are the colors that I'll be using today. Um, let me see if I missed any questions. Um, dips? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll refer to you as dips. Hello, Andy. Um, did I get a new house yet? Um, not yet. Uh, the the uh, owner said that she'd get back to us at the end of the week. Well, today is Thursday, so it's pretty close to the end of the week, so I'm hoping to hear back soon. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the color I'm going to be using, 1093. Essentially what I'm going to do here is cover the entire ice cream. This is the perfect beige color. Now the only areas that I'm going to avoid with this color are where I applied a generous amount of the white on day one. So I want to just kind of start covering the paper, but I want those highlights, those pure white highlights to remain as bright as possible. So I'm gonna work around those highlights. But as uh, you guys have followed this project, and for those of you that might actually be following along with uh, your own drawing, um, essentially the whole theme and process of this entire project has been establish a base color, a base layer, and then build all of the other intricate details on top of it. And the same is going to be with the ice cream here. So nothing different than what we've already been doing. And I'm just going to apply this color over the entire 
ice cream. I do not have any experience with that brand of colored pencils, but I hope that they work out really well for you. Hello, Anusha and uh, Daniel and Jello. Hello. Hopefully, I didn't miss anybody in the chat coming in. I always try to say hi to everyone. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. You should probably be tired of, of hearing me say that I never get enough questions. Um, but if I ever came anywhere near to having too many questions, I'd probably stop saying that. So you guys gotta step up your game. I'm, I'm never, I never get tired or I have never gotten tired from answering questions, but I am growing, I am growing tired of, of saying that I never get enough. <laughs> Hello, Andrea. So the ice cream itself even has a little bit of the bright orange that the ice cream cone has, which is kind of fun. Some of the shadows uh, instead of the shadows being uh, bluish, they're they're just like a, a real bright orange. It's kind of funny. You don't see that too often. Now, we have a lot of... I don't even know what you'd call it. So part of the ice cream has melted, which makes that smooth look. And then other parts of the ice cream are still nice and frozen and have that, that rougher texture. And we're going to completely ignore that rough texture and we're going to add that texture later on. So essentially we're just going to make the whole ice cream nice and smooth. Very artificial looking um, is how it's going to end up looking. But once we add the, the texture over top of the smooth ice cream, we'll have that, that more texture diversity that we need in order to make it look more realistic. Uh, could this project, could this project here be done with a 12 set of pencils? I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I used I used a pretty good amount of, of colors on this project, not a terrible amount. But the thing with um, the thing with the colors that I have chosen for this project is that I chose the colors that were closest to what I wanted. And the reality is I could probably have chosen fewer colors and just did more just did more mixing. That that process would take a little bit longer, but I think in the end with 12 colors you probably could get really really close and still come out with a a, a nice a nice picture at the end. Uh, do I use spray fixative after I'm done? With colored pencils, I don't use fixative either. Um, sometimes I do, but for the most part, all of these drawings just end up in my drawer over there. And if I were to ever sell them, uh, then I would use a fixative to make sure that they're preserved for the individual buying them. I don't want them to like go bad in the you know 40 years or whatever. I gotta lift off a little bit more graphite around the outline over here. Usually with colored pencils, I only use fixative when I do commissions, and I never use I never do commissions. I don't remember the last commission that I've had, um, partially because I don't like to do commissions. Too much it's too much pressure when I, when a commission comes through it's just it just makes art not fun 
as soon as you start working for somebody else, it well, at least for me anyway, it, it just becomes a lot less enjoyable. And my my motivation to be creative and take my time and stuff completely just goes right out the window. As soon as I know it's a commission, it's just gone. I don't even want anything to do with it. So I, th I, I found it best for me to avoid taking on commissions unless they make me enough money to convince me otherwise, which is rare, but still happens occasionally. Um, oh, hey, Sergio and Arnie and Betsy. I didn't say hello when you asked the question. Um, previously, you think that you heard me say that I have all of my pencil colors in Photoshop, so making it easy to color match. How have you done that? Um, so, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but I have a master color chart that I have on my website that you can buy that has um, like a, a high resolution photo of all the Prismacolors, all of the luminance, and all of the polychromos in their respective color families side by side. So it's a little bit of a conversion chart, but it's also just a master color chart. And what I do with Photoshop, like when I have, when I'm working, like for this project, I have the picture, the reference photo in Photoshop right on my monitor, right in front of my face right now. And I have the text just beside it, or the chat, I mean. And uh, to color match, what I do is I use Photoshop to isolate a color and then I, I just look at the color on my monitor. It's just in front of my face. And then I use that color and I look over at my color chart and I look back at it and I look back at my color chart and I think, okay, that's the color I want to use. And that's, that's how it goes. That's how I do it. Um, am I aware the new additional 24 luminance colors? Uh, no, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea of that. I, I just bought art supplies for the first time like two days ago. Um, and it was just to replace some of the pastel pencils, the Carbothello pencils. And that was it. That's all I bought. I didn't buy anything else or look at anything else. That was that was it. Another thing that I'm avoiding at the moment doing is any of the like the caramel swirl that goes through the ice cream. Uh, so you have like the swirly bits on the ice cream. Uh, I have not considered that color yet. Um, just covering everything with this one single co color. And it's almost done. I'm almost done with this color for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the darker color, which is that, what is it, the 1080? Yeah, the 1080 color. And then I'm going to start building the shadows and the form of the ice cream to give it a little bit more dimension. Oh, you're not sure if those luminants are uh, available yet? Yeah, I, I have not heard a single thing about them. Honestly, I don't even feel like, like 24 new colors in the luminance set, like that's overkill. Those, those colors have always been so like, so thorough. Um, <clears throat> trying to think, like, I don't even know what colors I'd want. Uh, some reds. Yeah, I think I want just a tiny bit more reds. I would, I would go for that. But browns. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what's always been missing from luminance is a good selection of browns like some reddish browns, some greenish browns, 
some yellowish orange browns. Yeah, that. So hopefully there's a couple reds and there's a couple browns in those in those new 24, but I have not heard a thing about it. Anyways, um, I'm switching colors here to the 1080 color. Like I said, I'm just going to start building up some of the dimension of the cone, some of the shadows. Now for the textured areas that have like a lot of the texture, I'm going to ignore those, those parts for now and just focus on the smoother areas that I can kind of block in a little bit of these shadows here. And what I, what I want you to focus on when doing this is the, is the large shapes that you can identify. Fill in the large shapes first. Oh, is that so, Sergio? That's funny. Yeah, I still never, I still never even looked at the the Derwent light fast. I'm kind of, I'm kind of anti Derwent. <laughs> after their, after their, uh, after I bought their pastel pencils, I was like, I was, I just couldn't trust them. And I'll probably never buy the, the Derwent Light Fast Pencils unless somebody buys them for me. Or, or Derwent contacts me and gives them to me. That's, that's about the only, the only chance that I got getting those pencils. Because I have, I have way too many pencils right now as it is. Because I don't even use my luminance. I, I kind of fell in love with the polychromos ironically considering how many years I've had them and didn't like using them uh, do I do a background or leave it so on this project I'm not doing any background uh, sometimes I'll do backgrounds with colored pencils but uh, not on this project. On this project, I'm just going to leave it the gray paper. If I was going to do a background of this project, I probably wouldn't have done it on gray paper. What color is close to burnt sienna? Uh, in Carbothello? Oh, goodness. Burnt sienna is like a, a brown orange. Uh, so just look for something that is brown and has like a hint of orange. <laughs> a brown that leans towards orange. That's that's probably going to get you pretty close to what you're looking for. I don't I don't know the number off the top of my head. Honestly, you can go to you can go to uh, websites that sell the Carbothello pencils individually and just look up burnt sienna, and then that will. That will give you a much a much definitive answer than I am able to give you right in this moment. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm mixing it up with uh, just regular sienna, Sergio. Yeah, burnt sienna might be more red. I'd have to look. I just don't have the color. I just don't have the color like sitting in front of me, and I don't have any uh, labels on my color charts. It's just the number, corresponding number. There's too many sienna colors that I've seen, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's uh, a brown that leans towards orange.
probably should have sharpened this pencil a little bit. Forgot to do that before I started streaming. Oh, hello, Janice. Good to see you. The ice cream is starting to get a little bit more dimensional. I almost feel like I need to go darker, but I think what I'll end up doing is probably going lighter in the highlights. We'll see. Um, this color this color is not laying down as dark as I thought it was going to, but I do have some other colors from the other parts of this project that I could I could simply just bring in to make it to make some of the areas darker. Especially this side of the ice cream where it gets it starts to get almost gray. It starts to turn almost gray here. Zero six nine, burnt sienna. A okay, burnt sienna fifty percent is the eight six six color. Really? That's odd. The wait, what did you say it was? Zero six nine. Zero six nine is burnt sienna. That's really really dark. I wonder what it is for, for Prismacolor. I. I like I said, I don't have the title here, but I do have I do have this one, and this one has titles. Um, yeah, see, burnt sienna, orange brown. This is this is a paint, so this is um, burnt sienna as acrylic paint, and it's much more orange brown than it is that deep dark red that 069 of, of luminance is. So I knew I wasn't going crazy. So people, I, I guess they'll just use burnt sienna differently and depending on the brand. But uh, yeah, I knew I wasn't going crazy there. How do I store all of my pencils? Uh, I, I have them all in the factory container. So they're all still in the original boxes. And I store them in order in which I have them on my color chart so that I can look at my color chart and reasonably guess the the exact location in the box so that I don't have to spend 15 minutes searching for one color in a bundle of a hundred and some colors although I will admit my Prismacolors are not quite in order right now because I just haven't been feeling like putting them back in order when I put them away after a project so I've just kind of been throwing them in there for for the last like couple projects but my other pencils are still in order partially because I never use them but Yeah, I, I like I said. I think the burnt sienna color and all of the all of the colors that share the same name in different uh, mediums and different brands will all have a slightly uh, different look to them. 
But yeah, that's that's really odd that the luminance burnt sienna is essentially like I don't know, almost like the darkest red brown that you can think of. And then the eight six six color being fifty percent. Ah, that's a that's a terrible name for that color because that that color is is purple. It's not even brown at all. Eight six six is purple. Why they would call that burnt sienna fifty percent is beyond me. Yeah, I gotta. Indeed, Janice, I do have to color faster. The ice cream is melting. <laughs> trying to go, trying to go as quickly as I can. But I gotta, I gotta use a light, light pressure so that the ice cream stays um, smooth. So I gotta keep it nice and smooth looking. I'm gonna have to grab a fourth color. Um, to get that that darker gray tone in those darker areas on the ice cream but for most of the shadow I can use this color to, to map out where some of those really dark spots are and then kind of lighten it up just a little bit as I get more towards the uh, highlight sections Drawing this project does make me want ice cream. So I, you, I'm jealous, Sergio, that you have ice cream in your freezer. There's not a very good selection of, of vegan ice cream here in Poland. And of the selection, none of them are really that good. This area up here is pretty dark, so I'm just gonna kind of do a layer on it. Oh, is your birthday coming up, Janice? Is that what you mean by that? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I did find a place with decent ice cream, but the problem is that they change the flavor every week, and I would say close to 80% of the time, it's a flavor I don't want or is mediocre in taste. It's quite unfortunate, but nothing I can do about it. All right, um, that is starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna use my, my pencil blender here, my paper pencil blender, and try to smooth out the ice cream and get rid of the, uh, the graininess of it before I move on to a different color. So I'm just gonna use this to to smooth it out a little bit. What would it take me to turn your ice cream from vanilla to chocolate? Um Well, I don't think this is vanilla ice cream, first off. Um, this 
the the ice cream is tan. It's not. It, it's not. It doesn't look like vanilla ice cream to me. And it has that caramel swirl in it. So it's probably some kind of. I don't know mocha ice cream with caramel swirl, which sounds far more delicious than just plain old vanilla. Um, do, do Anna and I still do date nights? Well, we haven't been able to because everything's closed. Um, but as soon as the world starts to look normal again, I can assure you date night is going to be back on the schedule. Because I I've been missing it, I miss I miss going out and getting like tasty food and occasionally ice cream, especially during summer when it's when it's warm. Well, if I can even say that it's been warm, it has not been warm here, um, but maybe three or four days so far this year. But maybe one day it will be warm. All right, let's see what, what colors I have. Um, I could go with like a, just a darker brown, play it safe with a darker brown. I have that chocolate col color, so maybe I'll just do that. Um, but I'm going to, let's see, I wanna sharpen these pencils. Yeah, I'm gonna sharpen my pencils really quick, so just give me, give me a moment here. Okie dokie. Yeah, so I, this is another color, just uh, recycling more colors. This is the chocolate 1082 color that we used both in the hand and the ice cream cone. Uh, and I'm gonna use it real lightly to darken up the shadows a little bit more because that, that 1080 color was not quite as dark as I thought it was going to be. Oh, okay, Janice. All right, all right. I I, I get it now. I thought I thought you were saying it was your birthday. <laughs> you needed to get ice cream because you're gonna have cake and ice cream for your birthday. So that's that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and when when I read the thirty eight, I was like, oh wow, Janice is a lot younger than I thought she was. <laughs> Since this color is quite a bit darker, you gotta use uh, just a teeny tiny amount of pressure to slowly build it up so that you don't make lines. And then of course you can use your blender to smooth it out before things get too rough. Yeah, some of the sometimes you run across a, a colored pencil 
uh, Carol that the color just keeps breaking. But ever since I changed to an electric pencil sharpener, I don't know if I've ever had a colored pencil break. I very, very rarely will I have a pastel pencil break, but that does happen every now and again. But as far as a colored pencil, well, there's my wife sneezing on live stream again. Um, but ever since I switched to an electric pencil sharpener, uh, it's never it's never broken um, a colored pencil. And it's probably only broken a, a pastel pencil one or two times, which that's a huge, huge feat. Uh, what is a question that I hope that I hope people would ask but they never do? I don't know. That, that's that's a good question because I just straight up don't know. I never thought about it. Yeah, I, I the questions that I think I enjoy the most are the ones that help me teach. So if there's something that I can, if there's something that I know that I'm unaware that you don't know, and you ask me and I happen to know the answer, I think those are my favorite questions to get into. But I also like questions that just get me talking. I'm I'm horrible conversationalist absolutely horrible but if you ask me questions I can talk for hours and I wish I could just come up with the topic myself and not have to rely so heavily on people asking me questions but when it comes down to it that's just just the way I am hardwired I guess I just um, struggle a lot with coming up with topics because my my interests fluctuate so so rapidly and my ideas fluctuate so rapidly it makes it really hard for me to to come up with something that i think would be relatable i guess i don't know um Uh, I looked at the pencil sharpener, but I think it only comes with the UK plug. Yeah, I think I think my Jakar electric sharpener that I used does only come with the the UK plug. But um, as I've I've mentioned a couple times briefly that this is the first and only electric pencil sharpener that I have ever bought and owned and used, and maybe. I just got that lucky in the sense that I bought the right one the first time and all the other ones aren't nearly as good, but I don't think that's the case. Um, I, I think electric pencil sharpeners are probably a lot like electric toothbrushes in the sense that, yeah, there's different brands and they all kind of, you know, they all have like their own look or whatever, but they all pretty much are going to work the same and do and do just as good of, of a job and so i think i think electric pencil sharpeners are probably somewhere in that same category of it doesn't really matter if you have the exact one that i use you could probably go out find any any electric pencil sharpener and it's going to um it's going to do the job now don't don't blame me if you go out and buy like the cheapest, most rundown looking brand of electric pencil sharpener and it all it does is eat your pencils. Um, I mean, I would still recommend looking for some kind of quality in whatever it is you get, but um, you probably don't have to go with the one that I have to be okay. Um... Yes, indeed, Sergio. Yeah, any any questions that keep me top, 
talking are the are, are good questions. What difference in colors when doing sunrises and sunsets? Um, sunsets have more of a yellow, or uh, sunrises lean more towards the yellow-orange side of colors, whereas sunsets can be anything. Colors can range everything from yellow, orange, pink, blue, gray, probably not green, purple, and you have like a, a much wider range of colors that come from sunsets as opposed to sunrises. I'm not sure if sunrises can be the same colors as sunsets. I think I think there's always a little bit of a difference there. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. But usually, when I when I think of sunrises, when I see sunrises, they always tend to be more yellow orange, whereas sunsets they just seem to be every color they just seem to be all of them um so my pencil sharpener i don't know i think it's yeah the luminance pencils are too thick the luminance pencils are too thick for my pencil sharpener, so I just use a a hand crank sharpener for my luminance pencils. Actually, I have a Caran d'Ache pencil sharpener that I use for them. Um, the luminance pencils don't ever break. I don't know if I've ever had a luminance pencil break, even after dropping them on the ground. Um, their build quality is quite a bit higher than... Prismacolor. Prismacolor is, yeah, their build quality is not flawless in any, in any regard, but if Prismacolor, you know, took a lot of effort to increase their product quality, then their price would have to go way up. And I like the accessibility into the medium via Prismacolor because it's it's makes the medium that much more friendly to get into. You don't have to go out and spend three, four hundred dollars uh, to get into the medium. You can buy a small pack of the Prismacolors for like 20 bucks and then just some decent pack of paper for another 10 and you can you can just immediately start and get into the into learning the techniques and getting used to what colored pencils feels like and all of that. And if Prismacolor increased to their uh, quality, then, you know, that price would have to go up and then it'd just be harder for everybody to get, in, get into. And I would say colored pencils probably aren't the medium for everybody because um, they're, you know, the, the technical approach is a bit different than any other medium in the sense that we spend our lives using pencils to write things down, to sign our name, and all of that. And so a lot of the techniques require you to unlearn how you hold a pencil and how you uh, apply pressure to a pencil to write things. And a lot of people struggle with being heavy-handed when they're working with colored pencils and that's just part of that's just part of the learning process with them is you have to kind of unlearn everything that taught you how to hold a pencil so that you can write and sign your name and stuff no other medium is like that you know you don't spend your life writing with pastels or writing with a paintbrush so when you pick up a paintbrush for the first time, you don't have a whole lifetime of experience um, moving that brush in a particular manner that is counterintuitive to art. Whereas pencils, it's not the case. 
when you pick up a paintbrush for the first time, you're, you're learning how to use it. And so you're starting with a clean slate, which is beneficial. Good to start with a clean slate. Uh, where do I order Prismacolors from? I order them from a company in the UK. I can I can order the Prismacolors individually by pencil from this uh, little pencil company in the UK. I don't even know the name of it. I literally Googled it, I think. And just found found some company that sells them individually. Uh, I get my pastel mat from uh, from the Netherlands. I get pretty much everything else from Jackson's, and then uh, my individual Prismacolors I will get from that small company that I don't even know the name of. Oh, hello, Liz. Um, Sorry, I didn't see you come into the chat. I am doing very well. Thank you for asking. Colored Pencil Shop. Uh, are you asking me if that's the name? I honestly have no idea. The Colored Pencil Shop. If that is a place, uh, then it might be the place um, I, I honestly don't know, like, if you were to give me the name, I would not know. That's how little of an idea I have as to whether or not that is the place. You could quite possibly be correct that it, that is the place that I ordered them from, but, um, I have no idea if it is because i i don't remember the last time i ordered single prismacolors actually it's been like two years or something the last time i ordered prismacolors what i did um i needed so many colors that i just bought another 150 set and i got that off of uh, amazon i think and that was oh gosh when was that i think it was um it was when I did my intro to colored pencil course, I think. And I, I wanted a, a, a fresh set just for the, the B-roll footage for the, the, the intro to colored pencil course. Because I didn't even use them to do the course. I just used them. I, they just stayed in the box completely untouched. And for the most part, they're still untouched. They're just uh, all of my extra pencils. Uh, I think there was maybe one color that I pulled out to replace because I had a pencil sharpener eat it just completely from tip to tail. So now that I've established a little bit of the dimension on the ice cream cone, I'm starting to put in a few of the details. And what I'm gonna do next is probably, um, I'm gonna use that base color again to start smoothing it more, just applying more pencil to the paper to get a nice smooth finish. And then I'll just kind of work back through my colors to just create a nice, smooth, consistent look. And then after I have that really nice, smooth look, uh, I'll start focusing in and really start putting in some of the textures and details, uh, including the caramel stripes. Um, am I finding time to use my Copics? No. Copics. Um, uh, my Copic markers, no. I don't remember the last time that I've used them. I don't think I've even touched them since. Actually, the last time I used them 
was the one I worked on the family portrait, which I haven't worked on, I think, since January. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the uh, the 1093 color. And I'm just going to kind of work this color back over everything and smooth out the transitions of the ice cream color. And then I'll switch over to that 1080 color and then I will essentially just do the same thing that I'm doing here with this color, but I'll work that over the shadows. And that should give me a really nice clean finish for the ice cream. And then I will use white to bring out the highlights. And after I do that, then it's just the texture and I will be done with this project. So I would say maybe another 25, 30 minutes of working on this and we will be done. And uh, as I mentioned on Tuesday, uh, so these tutorials that I've been sharing publicly for everyone, these, these tutorials and these projects uh, normally are, are Patreon-only tutorials. And the, the line art and the reference photo is, is still just accessible to patrons for these projects. Um, and this is actually going to be the last colored pencil project. Um, so I will continue the pastel project uh, publicly until it's complete. I don't want to stop the project and switch it back over to, to Patreon only. But next week, um, my wife is going back to work in the actual office. I don't know for how long or if it's going to even be all week. But uh, I know things are starting to get back to normal, which is a really great thing. And I, I, I hate to pull the rug out from underneath your feet um, in this regard. But the next colored pencil tutorial will be a Patreon only exclusive. So just want to make that known. So next Thursday, there will still be a colored pencil tutorial, but it will only be on Patreon. So I hope, I hope to see some new faces over there. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this colored pencil project. For those of you that aren't over on Patreon and are unaware of the huge library of colored pencil tutorials, I think I have over 130 or 140 colored pencil tutorials ranging Everything from still life to portraits to, to animals. Oh, hey there, Wendy. It's good to see you. Uh, the next project, that's a good question. So the next project is a, uh, it was a request um, that was made, I think, right before I started this project. Um, so if, if you've seen my live stream where I went through all of my artwork, a lot of people really liked the, uh, the male figure uh, drawings that I did in my old sketchbook. And so the next project is going to be um, the male figure. And I'm going to do it with... Uh, with three colors, black, white, and brown. And I'm gonna do it on this paper here. I think I only have one piece of this paper left, which I wish I would have remembered two days ago when I ordered, when I ordered art supplies. I would have bought another pack of this paper, probably two or three more packs of this paper because I love this paper. Um, oh, 
Oh, you're absolutely welcome, Sneaks. Yep, my pleasure. Uh, how, how much is Patreon a month? It is $5 a month. $5 a month, you'll continue to get access to the colored pencil and pastel live streams that are every Tuesday and Thursday, but you'll also have access to the the huge library. I think I have somewhere around 300 tutorials that include um, colored pencil and pastel, graphite, and I think I have two Photoshop tutorials also. Uh, now I'm switching colors to the 1080 color and uh, working in on the shadows a little bit. Just continuing to smooth things out. The ice cream is quite smooth right now, actually. So not a whole lot left to, to smooth out. And then from here, uh, I will grab the white and we'll work on the highlights a little bit. Really start to, to make the some of the bumpier parts of the ice cream show up a little bit better. And then once I get that done, I'll add the caramel stripes, the touches of orange maybe, and um, the texture, and that'll be it. Have I considered taking, uh, using the markers, using my Copics on, I, I haven't, what I was thinking is maybe I will do that for the um, the special live stream when I hit 100,000 subscribers. Uh, that It's possible that I'll just work on that while chatting. But um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really been in the coloring mood um, with the, the Copic markers because they've kind of frustrated me uh, considering how expensive they are and there's like three or four markers that just flat out don't work at all and it, it just kind of it I just wasn't in the mood I wasn't in the mood to deal with it I thought it was completely ridiculous that I spend like nine hundred dollars on markers and I get a handful of them that just straight up don't work and uh, I was very very annoyed by that and I, I, did, I don't even want to look at them. Because I've never spent that much money on art supplies, on such few art supplies. And to have them, to have even, maybe if, if only one of them didn't work, I would, I would be okay with that. I would be like, uh, it's, it's one marker, it's not that big of a deal. But to have like four to five of them not work, that's unacceptable. That's absolutely unacceptable. Because there, I only have, what is it, um, 144? Yeah, I have 144 of them. And so to have, let's just say I have five of them, that's, that's like 5%. Like four to five, it's, it's, like, it's like four and a half percent. Four to four and a half percent that don't work and that's just absolutely ridiculous that's unexcusable um where do i get reference photos uh the internet i i get them from all over the place uh but what I, there's, there's a few things that I like to do. So there's this one website called Unsplash. That's probably one of my favorites because you're gonna get high quality photos or high resolution photos. Yeah, let me rephrase that, not high quality, high, high resolution. Um, and that's like the, uh, that's like photographer's junkyard. Uh, Unsplash is like the photography's junkyard because it's just filled with a bunch of mediocre artsy shots um, that sometimes have decent composition, but most of the time they're just 
unusable, but every once in a while you come across a gem and it has a pretty good search option so you can kind of filter through some of the junk you don't want to look at. Um, and then my other favorite thing to do uh, is to use the search. So I like, I, I hate Pinterest, but when it comes to the search uh, on Pinterest, the, the search menu on, in, on Pinterest is the best for you to find like really unique and specific things. And then what you do is once you find an image that you like, you, uh, you simply back search it by right clicking and have Google look for that image. And you can usually find that image in a higher quality or find the original to, um, to get the best quality. And then you can use different photo enhancers to make it look better. Um, but yeah, that's, that's usually how I do it. Uh, see, the thing, now the, the next question that should be probably considered is about copyright stuff. Um, and let me just clarify that when I, when I use a, a picture, it doesn't matter what picture it is, when I use a picture for the purposes of education, which is what I do, I teach you guys how to draw and color and paint things, um, copyright does not apply. I can use whatever picture I want and, and, and color it and teach you guys how to do it. That, the copyright does not apply to that. Um, now, where copyright does apply is if I am using that image, recreating it for the purpose of, of selling it or making prints out of it. That is where you cross the line with copyright. So the references that I use, um, generally I stick to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Royalty free. I would say, Nine times out of ten, I stick to royalty-free images. That's the other benefit of the Unsplash website, because uh, those are royalty-free images that the photographer themselves post and give you permission to use in any way. Um, and, yeah, what else? I'm trying to think. But... Yeah, I don't. I don't have to concern myself with, with uh, any of the copyright stuff because I do it educationally. Anything that is used for educational purposes, copyright does not apply. So I never have to worry about copyright stuff because I don't sell my artwork, and even if I did, I just wouldn't sell the copyrighted material. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see here. Almost done. I'm just going to quickly smooth some of that pencil grain out very broadly. There we go. Uh, now I want to use the white. I uh, Yeah, I probably should contact them to replace the markers, but I just don't care enough. Honestly, the fact that I'd have to deal with such a thing is even more annoying. Um, so I'm just going to probably buy new ones eventually. Once I take the time to figure out which ones don't work, because like I said, there's like four or five of them and I'm not even sure which ones they are at this point. Uh, yes, Wendy, I understand. Um, there is not a copyright issue, I can assure you. <clears throat> if you get paid to teach, you can still use copyrighted material. That's like saying if, um, let's, I'm just coming up with an example. Let's say a university professor, because there's no argument that that's a teacher, uses a, um, say they're, uh, I don't know, political science teacher, right? And they use s some uh, news clip to make a point or something like that. They use the news clip in their class. The news clip is obviously copyrighted material, but just because they use it 
doesn't make it copyright infringement, even though they're getting paid to do what they're doing. And the same is true with me. <clears throat> Anything that is used for educational purposes is outside the spectrum of copyright. Because it would be, um, let's say uh, somebody were to argue that, say I used some kind of, uh, some picture that somebody has and they, they don't like that I used it to teach or whatever, uh, and they tried to sue me, uh, they would have to prove in court that uh, the manner in which I used their material was not educational and I can promise you they would lose that argument everything falls under fair fair use when it's used for educational purposes that's why documentaries Documentary movies can use copyrighted material if it is for the purpose, if it's transformative. Transformative media includes photographs. I have, I can assure you, I have read up on, <laughs> I have read up on copyright. Let's use a little bit of this now for the smoother part of the ice cream and just bring out some of the brighter areas on the smooth part. Because I was just there, I was just hitting up some of the highlights uh, that I'd previously applied. So now I'm going to start brightening the smoother part. And this should really make the ice cream stick out better. Yes, I understand, Janice. Of course. Of course. Yeah, I would, I would never jeopardize that. I, I would never jeopardize that. And even, even as a precaution, uh, even though it's, it's a little bit more of a precaution, a um, little bit more than a precaution, uh, for my courses that I sell on my website, because I also supply the reference photos, I always buy those reference photos. So I don't use, I don't, I don't use um, any copyrighted material for my courses, but for my tutorials that I just do here on YouTube, yeah, those are fine. Even though it, it would actually be fine with my courses also. Um, because it's still educational. Uh, I never, I didn't want to risk it. Because the thing with copyright is it's not black and white. It's very, very vague. And um, that's why, like, with the, uh, the fair use, the fair use in copyright is, is so highly contested because it's so, it's so arbitrary. It's very, very arbitrary. 
So I didn't want to take that risk with any of my courses that I that I made. Oh, hey there, Chandri. I I hope you get things situated with the with that. I'm sorry to hear that you had to go to the hospital. So I'm almost done here with the white. And the last thing that I'm going to do, I'm gonna add the caramel swirl, and then I will also um, add some of the texture with the darker colors, and that will be it for this project. So now I now have Nice uh, melted ice cream. Now I'm going to add a little bit of those bits where the ice cream isn't so melted. Uh, let's do the uh, caramel swirl. I'm going to use this color, the Sienna Brown 945, to start putting in some of the swirl. And I'm going to start with just kind of a little bit of squiggly lines to put uh, kind of a base of where the color is swirling around there. And then I also have an orange that I will use. So I'm just kind of trying to not use any straight lines, just a bunch of wiggly lines. And applying more lines where it's a bit darker. So something like that there. I have this swirl coming over like this. Um, then I have a lighter one over here. And that's really about it. One sneaking in the shadow back there. So a little bit of that. And now I'm going to grab an orange. And this is going to be the same orange that I used on the ice cream cone, that uh, 921. It's a really bright orange. Just to give the, uh, the caramel color a nice pop to it. I'm not going real heavy with this color. And then I also want to add some of the orange into the shadows where they, they start to appear a little bit more orange. Very, very light use of this color. Well, thank you, Sherry, for considering that. I appreciate it. And I, I, hope, to, I hope to see you over there soon. I'm going to apply like a light layer of the orange right over this strip of caramel. And then a little bit back here also. And 
Nope, no, uh, no solvent at all on this project. Zero solvent. Um, the more I've used, the, the more that I've used this pencil blender, um, the, this is, I think this is solid. No, this one is with a rolled one. Tortillion, is that what these ones are called? The ones that are rolled? Yeah, this is the like, tightly rolled paper one. Uh, the more I've experimented using those with colored pencils, the more I prefer those as opposed to uh, solvent. Solvent's still great, and it can be uh, used really effectively for large areas. Um, but I find like the control that I get from from the paper blenders, I just I like that better. Let's see. Um, I'm going to add another color into the caramel. Uh, this is that yellow color that I... Th Where did we use this color? Oh, we used this in the skin. This is 1012. I want to bring in just a little bit of extra yellow into the, the caramel. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the ice cream as well in some of the shadow areas. All right, uh, and now I'm going to use, what color do I want to use? I think I'm going to use the 945 for the texture. So now I'm going to just come in here and add the little um, dots of like the little holes. I guess they'd be air bubbles that that popped out or something. So for the air bubbles, I'm going to use this color here. Absolutely, I'm glad. I'm glad uh, you finally got some Prismacolor pencils and that you're enjoying them. I I hope that you have uh, much fun with them for many years to come. When I, when I first bought Prismacolors, I bought the set of 72. So I, I bought a, the pack of 72. I used them for, for, I think, two years before I ever bought any more pencils. And um, I, went from, I went from the Prismacolor pencils to the Luminance pencils. And so I went from the 72 set of Prismacolor to the 76 set, 74 set of Luminance. I don't ever remember how many colors I have. But um, yeah, I still, now as you can see, I still use the, the Prismacolors. Can't remember the last time I used the, the Luminance pencils, but I mean, the Prismacolors, they work really great. They'll give you the full experiment uh, experience of, of colored pencils. So you, you never really have to feel pressured to get the expensive stuff because the Prismacolors work just fine. Um... Do I ever worry about the perils of gaining celebrity-like popularity? Um, do I think popularity has changed the way I deal with the public? That's an interesting question, Marcy. Um, I, I've considered the drawbacks of popularity 
I'm, I've never, I never seek popularity, which is why I'm not one of those YouTubers that, you know, screams to subscribe and like the video. Like, if you subscribe, that's great. If you like the video, that's, that's okay too. I mean, no pressure. Um, I do this because I enjoy it. And if people come and subscribe and stuff, that's fantastic. That's, that's good too. Um, but the, like, I can't, I can't change or what was it? I, I can't pretend to be somebody else. I, I've never been able to do that. And popularity was something that I never dealt with. Like I was, I, w I went through high school and school in general, and especially I went through college. I went through college, I made a couple friends, but like, that's about it. And when it, so I, I basically went through all of that stuff in the shadow. Like I just, I always stayed to myself pretty much. And um, I don't I don't know how, I, I feel like more people know me than I know them simply because I never really interacted with many people. Popularity was something that I never sought. And I think that's where the distinction can be made between uh, people that are popular is you can tell, you can kind of tell the, the people that try to be popular in just the way that they act and carry themselves. And then the people that are popular that don't really, don't really care. Um, and I don't know, this is a difficult subject. It's a difficult subject to talk about, but essentially, like, I'm not concerned about popularity at all, and I would never let it change me as a person. So I am i don't have too much concern as to if, if my channel were, for some reason, to go, like, get super popular. Because I'd still, I'd still want to chat with the same people that have been around for years. I mean, I recognize so many of you in chat, and... I'd still want to, to see you guys in the chat, even if I had a million subscribers. Like, I would be searching for your guys' names. Like, I would make sure that I'm saying hello to you guys before anybody else, because you've been here. At the, yeah, you're, the, you're, you're like the, the, the real friends, you know, not the bandwagons. And I don't want bandwagon friends. So, anyways, um... I think I'm going to call this done. So let me zoom out here. I'll zoom out so you guys can see the full picture. There we go. Let me bring some light there. I'm trying to lighten it up so you guys can see it better. Anyways, I hope that you can see that okay. Um, but yeah. So there is the finished ice cream cone project. Uh, I think it came out pretty good. I, I think what I'm most satisfied about is the hand. Um, I really, really like the improvement that I was able to do on the fingernails. Uh, the fingernails in the reference photo are not the greatest things to look at, but um, I feel like I made them look much nicer in the drawing, which you, you, always, you always wanna be able to do that when, as an artist, like, make things look better than they do in the reference photo. Um, and so I, I like the hand. I like the way the hand looks. And uh, I, I think, um, I don't know, maybe the ice cream cone. I'm not totally fond of the ice cream cone. I don't know why. Maybe it's just this lighting. Um, but uh, the ice cream, I like the ice cream, yeah. The cone, probably not. I don't know. I'm not really feeling the cone. But anyways, that is going to be it for this project, and that's going to be it for today's live stream. Uh, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, now, like I mentioned earlier, next week, the colored pencil tutorial is going back to Patreon, since the world is somewhat getting back to normal. Um, and uh, the, the pastel tutorial, however, will stay here publicly until that project is finished. I would imagine that there's going to be several weeks left on the pastel tutorial. So, um, yeah, so I'll still see you quite a bit. Anyways, you guys have a fantastic rest of your Thursday and Friday and weekend, and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Thank you so much, and uh, stay safe, stay healthy.
Take care. Peace.